In this presentation, I'm going to offer a brief overview of web accessibility and usability. I've always liked this quote by Tim Berners-Lee, who is credited with inventing the World Wide Web. I know it's a funny joke um, to say Al Gore invented the Internet, but Tim Berners-Lee is a physicist at CERN in Europe and actually came up with the notion of the interconnected World Wide Web. And this is a, a powerful quote from him. It says, the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. And I think that that's something that we need to continue to work for and, and, and strive towards. So what is accessibility? Obviously, I think it's, uh, at some level, a fairly straightforward definition. Um, although, often I think we confuse um, straightforward access to technology for um, a more robust understanding of web accessibility. So there are a couple of definitions here. One is maybe more my working definition. An accessible website is one that can be used by people with disabilities as easily as by people without disabilities. On the right-hand column, a more formal definition that says web accessibility means that people with disabilities can perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with the web. And that's the definition from the W3C, um, an acronym you'll hear a lot in this class. It stands for the World Wide Web Consortium, the group that um, sets standards and guidelines for web technologies. And a bit more specifically, accessible content is content that's accessible and usable by the largest possible number of users and is also compliant with legal and regulatory requirements as well as identified standards. And we're going to talk a lot about the legal and re regulatory requirements or lack thereof and also standards and what standards exist and are applicable. So why is web accessibility important? Obviously we all think it is or we wouldn't be having this conversation, but um, the use of the web is spread into all areas of society. I, I, it's almost such an obvious statement that it doesn't merit a bullet point anymore. Everything from going to the movies, to paying your taxes, to paying your water bill, to enrolling for classes, everything's moving to the web. There are barriers to the web for many types of disabilities, uh, and they all are different, and they are often depend on particular types of technology, um, and sometimes they're dependent on just web designers understanding what some of the issues are. Millions of people have disabilities that affect access, and um, that makes it an important issue. I always like to remind people that um, most of us experience disability at some point in our life, whether it's just because we're growing older, or whether we have an accident or an illness, or some change in our health. Um, disability um, is not something that's that's uh, you know static. Some websites are required to be accessible by law. Um, in the United States, there are um, two main um, legal requirements. I'll, t I'll talk more about them later. And web accessibility um, typically has benefits for a broader uh, group of users than just the um, people um, with disabilities that um, um, accessibility was intended for. This isn't a reason for accessibility, but it's a nice benefit. This is a great slide because it captures some of the uh, challenges and opportunities of accessibility. There are three pictures here that have um, images of uh, curb cuts on them. Curb cuts are those ramp-like um, modifications to the sidewalk and curb that um, allow um, for, um, that make it possible to roll up and down off the curb without having to go off the bump on the curb. Not being very articulate here. Uh, curb cuts are legally mandated in the United States and um, are very useful for a broad population of people. So if you're using a wheelchair, it makes getting across the street much safer and maybe even possible to get up and down off the curb. If you're pushing a stroller or wheeling a cart 
or wheeling your bike, it makes it a lot easier as well. So there are benefits for other users as well. Um, usability studies of curb cuts and ramped um, inclines have found that people often prefer to use an incline rather than going up steps anyway. It's, it's just easier to do. The cautionary tale in some of these images is found in the picture in the upper right hand corner where we have a curb cut that's leading into a grassy area, median in the middle of a road. So legally it's meeting a, a requirement of it's putting a curb cut in there where somebody would cross the street. However, functionally, it um, just leads to the middle of nowhere. So you get across there and you're in the middle of a grassy um, median space in the middle of the road with nowhere to go. And um, so sometimes we make these, uh, you know, there, there's a, a, a cautionary tale here that um, just because something is accessible by letter of the law or by some technical standard doesn't mean that it actually works or makes sense for users. Related to this is a notion of universal web design. And accessible web design can contribute to better design for other users for a variety of reasons. Again, we're going to get much more into this um, throughout the class, but some immediate benefits, things like multimodality, um, support for visual, auditory, tactile access. Well, um, there's obviously um, um, applications for people with disabilities in this, but other areas as well, things like mobile phones with small display screens, web um, TV, which is now kind of diminishing, um, although you still interact with the web on your TV if you use Netflix, things like that. Um, kiosks. So other types of devices. And what web accessibility is often about is device independence, ensuring that content and information on the web isn't only accessible by one type of technology. And so by making it more accessible, it's also multimodal. You have a mobile phone, um, a smartphone, um, some other form of technology that interacts with the web. Um, it helps as well. Um, multimodality also increases usability of websites in different situations. Low bandwidth, which is still an issue. Not every place in the United States has broadband. There are places north of Syracuse that don't have access, um, high-speed access to the internet. Um, noisy environments, where it's difficult to hear the audio. We all um, um, encounter captioning um, in, in many places and maybe don't even think about it. Places like the gym or the airport where it's either too loud, the ambient noise is too loud to make out what would be going on on the, on the TV or there's too many um, things competing for a, a viewer's attention. Multiple TV channels, say at the gym. So captioning um, is a great example of that. Um, screen glare, um, where it might be difficult to see the screen. Um, it can, you know, whether it's being used outside or um, in some place where contrast isn't as good. Um, driving, um, as much as we hate to admit it, people are increasingly accessing information while driving. I'm not advocating this, but um, I will admit that I have listened to um, web content um, while driving, so using um, Adobe Acrobat to read text to me. Redundant text, um, um, audio and video, so providing information in different formats. I'm trying a grand experiment here of recording the audio for this presentation while I'm also using Dragon to transcribe it and see how this works. Um, style Sheets, which is a, a web-specific technology, cascading style sheets, which makes it easier to maintain and change the look and feel of a website without having to change the content, um, without having to do a lot of, of, of maintenance. And finally, um, certainly last but not least, um, captioning of audio and video um, provides opportunities for um, indexing. So right now, and this might change, but right now, if you have audio content or video content, 
um, Google or other search engines actually can't index it. They can't access the information that's bound up in the audio or video. So by providing a transcript or transcription, um, there's another method for the uh, automated search tools to um, index. In the U.S. there are three primary legal and regulatory areas that um, impact conversations around web accessibility. Um, I should note that there are no, no legal requirements around usability. The Federal Rehab Act, um, there are two s sections of the, of the Federal Rehab Act, Section 504 and Section 508, and then um, the ADA. Um, so these three legal requirements are um, applicable in the realm of web accessibility. Um, it's not always very clear how um, they're applied. Um, the ADA is this, this predates the World Wide Web. It was signed into law in 1990 and um, just now is being revisited um, with um, kind of an eye towards specific language around um, internet technologies. The uh, Federal Rehab Act um, is um, has actually Section 508 of the Federal Rehab Act has more detail around um, internet and internet technologies. Again, we'll cover this a little bit down the road, but the applicability of Section 508 and Section 504 uh, isn't universal necessarily. So in higher education, um, Section 508 really may not apply. It's applicable to government agencies or to entities providing services to the federal government. So there is a little um, potentially gray area legally. The ADA um, is much more broadly applicable, but how it applies to the internet hasn't been clearly defined yet. So we'll be talking about all three of these, Section 504, Section 508, and the ADA um, in detail um, at different points in the class. I got a bit ahead of myself earlier, but just to mention again, groups um, impacted by web accessibility, um, people with uh, disabilities around uh, hearing, oral disabilities, uh, people with visual disabilities, um, blindness, color blindness, physical disabilities um, affect um, someone's ability to um, utilize particular um, hardware and cognitive disabilities um, everything from learning disabilities to developmental disabilities um, the, it's kind of wide open we often hear a lot about visual disability uh, when we talk about accessibility but um, there is a whole world of um, um, accessibility issues um, and it makes it, um, for me, really kind of a fun and challenging um, um, uh, technology um, discussion. Again, I mentioned this earlier, we're all temporarily abled. Um, whether it's your eyes getting um, worse as you age or something else. My father um, um, is blind and um, he um, had glaucoma and lost his vision when he was 22. So for me, um, I think that I um, have a, a family member and a kind of a personal connection to disability, both technologically because he's a screen reader user, but also because our ability and disability status changes. It's fluid. We get sick. Um, we age. Um, we have car accidents or injuries. And so, um, Accessibility is important because we are all tempor temporarily abled. My last slide in this presentation, just a quick peek at what I'll be talking about in my next one, um, some more emerging technologies, Web 2.0, and um, the social web. So stay tuned.